Elizabeth here. If you're new, welcome. I'm a pet and wildlife artist and instructor. And in today's video, I'll show you how I painted this acrylic Jaguar. Now I have a super awesome announcement. I have finally completed, finally completed the Master Animal Fur ebook and video painting guide. It's why I've been under the radar for quite some time now, because I have really just tried to pour out everything I've been learning about painting animal fur in the past couple years. So everything from long, short, tight curls, wavy, black, white fur, tiger stripes, rosettes, spots, markings, brindle fur. I mean, I covered everything I could think of with a focus on pet fur. So if this would bless you, I have links to the masterclass. This is in my online animal art masterclass and the master animal fur video and ebook guide is all in there. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, so before you even get started painting, I highly recommend you get down all those spots, all those rosettes as best you can in that sketch. Because after that background, that's what I'll start painting first on the cat. Now I used four different colors for this vibrant pastel yellowish pink background. I went with my favorite fluorescent pink by Liquid X, magenta by Master's Touch, yellow ochre by Master's Touch paint, and my favorite white paint, it's the Golden Brand Fluid White. Now the Jaguar has relatively short fur, that's why I didn't put too much focus on getting that background completed before working on the cat. So I let that dry while working on the eyes, nose, and mouth. So with the dark gray, I outlined the eyes, filled in the nostrils, and outlined the mouth, but with a dark violet, using just white with a lot of violet, I started filling in the right side spots and rosettes. If you notice here, I'm not just filling in all the spots, just as if I'm trying to cover them up. I'm using lines, clusters of lines to fill them in. And my light source is coming from the far left, so all my darker abstract colors I'll keep on the right. With that said, the left side will be my lighter values. However, these spots need to look like dark spots. So I'll only just go slightly lighter with a indigo. This is a purple violet that I'm adding on the left side, which I will eventually carry down to the spots and rosettes on the body. And this entire time working on the eyes, nose, and mouth and the spots, I've just been using my Arteza size one round brush. And I take a short break from the spots while I work on the insides of the ears, filling it in with a mixture of yellow ochre, black, and some raw sienna. Just like the spots, I want to start creating that fur texture even at the beginning when we're applying the base, keeping it much darker with more black deep on the inside of the ear and then with a lot more yellow ochre towards the outer edge of the inside of the ear. Now what I love about the Jaguar is we have so many tiny fine dots around the face that expand and get larger and create these beautiful rosettes around the arms and body. That's where I added more of that indigo, but I pulled in a bit more violet to tie them in nicely with the other spots and rosettes. Now the dark gray outline around the eyes has had plenty of time to dry, so I work on the eyes, trying to keep these eyes look calm and relaxed, but also very alert, keeping those pupils very small. And it's especially important for wild cats. We're almost always gonna have that thick shadow right at the top of the eye in the iris. Now I over exaggerate the pinks in the nose so I can pull out the magentas in the background and complement the greens in that right eye. All right, so once you know that those spots and rosettes are completely dry, now it's time to work around those spots and rosettes as carefully as you can. Now my goal is to keep that face more realistic between the markings. So I'm going with yellow ochre, raw sienna, and white. Now I really wanna be careful around these spots. I will have to go back to these spots, but if I'm careful in this step, not only will I be able to preserve these proportions, but I'll not have as much work for myself later, trying to touch up those spots or going back with this color to get any white specks that I left. Now, as we see more white around the muzzle, I added more violet to this color. So white, 
yellow ochre, a little bit of violet. Now this color is so light and so thin that I can actually paint directly over some of those little tiny markings on the bottom of the mouth. Now this is a part of my process where I want to add more abstract colors, but I'm not sure how to tie them in. So based on that light source, I place them where I think they'll go, and then I start connecting them with the other colors, blending them into those yellow ochres, adding some more pinks, adding some more white, just exploring color right here, not really having much of a plan, solving new problems, but only one at a time, like for instance here, to help me join the brown and yellows to the white around the snout, I added some cadmium yellow into my white and yellow ochre mixture. And next, to connect the violets around the chin to the neck, I added some fluorescent pink. As long as you're keeping a good pace working efficiently, you can blend these colors together because they'll be wet. And I have still not switched out my brush. I'm still using my favorite Arteza size one round brush. Again, I wanna prove here, I say this a lot, but it isn't about the brush. You don't have to have these fancy dancy brushes. It's all about how you use them and care for them. Now these next few steps, I go bold with my colors. I'm starting to see where I can go very abstract with pinks and blues and yellows and oranges. I think the trickiest part is carefully working around each marking without leaving any white or going over too much of the spot while also blending these areas together. That's tricky. That's why this brush I find the most helpful. So I gave my eyes a break from the spots and the areas between and I started working on that grass behind the cat. I used the background color but just added a little bit of raw sienna and more yellow ochre to it. I really wasn't sure how I was going to make this look blurry and abstract. It's something that I really want to improve upon is making those bulky backgrounds so that it's making the animal just pop out in the foreground. So I gave that a break just because I wasn't sure exactly how I wanted it. Continued working on the area between the spots, the more realistic fur. Then onto the ears, making sure I complete the base and the outline around the ears before working on the inner ear hairs. So I started with the thicker fur at the base of the ear and then just one strand at a time using a mix of white and yellow ochre. Layering in one strand at a time, overlapping but keeping about the same length, especially towards the inner part of the ear, that's where it's gonna be very long. But as I move up the ear, towards the outer part of the ear, that's where it begins to get much shorter. And the bulk of those strands, I'm gonna to layer towards the inner right of the left ear. I'll do the same thing, filling in the base on the right ear, but on that right side of the cat, I wanna go more abstract. So I used the same base, which is a little bit of black, raw sienna, yellow ochre, but I used a white and violet mixture for the inner ear hairs. Adding enough white to that so it's the exact same value as the inner ear hairs on the left ear, just a different color. Now I always like to add the detail work to the eyes at the end. I even decide to go and add some gold to the eyes, even gold to that green eye. And then I finish off those eyes with those little dabs of light gray for the eye highlights. The struggle is getting those highlights in the exact same area on both eyes so that it's right below that shadow above the top of the eye, never at the very top of the eye. So this wasn't my intent to redo the background, but I pretty much did once I finished the Jaguar. I added more magenta to the far right, and then I carefully created a glaze over top this first round of hay and I wiped it off so that you can still see it in the background when I apply the second layer over top. See how you can still slightly see it? This gives it more depth. So I went in with the same color, yellow ochre, raw sienna with some white, did the same thing but with a little bit more detail, and that finished off the background.
All right, creative. So that is how I painted this colorful, vibrant jaguar. If you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.